Hello and welcome to the test design introduction videos. These are five little videos on test design and give you a quick overview of these test design methods essentials basically. It's a short version of the test design module of the sub-certified QE course which has also exercises and a lot more stuff to it but this video introduction should give you enough to get started and give an overview. Why do we need test design? Well, in a typical program of 10,000 lines of code there are more possible execution paths than atoms in the universe. This sounds pretty extreme, but the math is actually correct. What this means is that the combinatorics of parameters play a huge role in software testing. And since we as SAP produce highly complex and configurable software, we have lots of parameters, and that of course leads to the, so, uh, so the consequence that we cannot possibly test all combinations. Actually, this is true for any non-trivial software. So the topic of test design is how to cover the parameter space in a smart way to find as many po as possible defects with as little effort as possible. And so this techniques that we're going to talk about is about covering the parameter space. So it's about functional correctness and try to be very smart of it, uh, about a systematic coverage of the parameter space. We'll come to that, what exactly that means. So now we'll cover black box test design. Some important points is that black box test design views the software from the outside. So we look at a certain point at an API or a UI of a component and we see what is offered there. So as far as fields or actions and so forth. And the focus here is on covering the parameter space in a systematic way. So it means what can I put in there and then I trigger some action and I see if the program behaves correctly. The first step in black box test design is to find the test cases in the first place. If you have a certain test scope to cover, let's say an API or UI, the first thing you have to ask yourself is you find the use cases of this piece of software and they become the test cases. So for the UI it could mean you look at, for instance, the scope is a screen, then you can ask as a user what can I do here, what can I click on, and each individual action becomes a test case because you need to t verify that it behaves correctly and so each of those actions behaves, uh, triggers the behavior that you need to verify. And uh, for an API it's actually even simpler because each function or method is a test case. It's, it's like from the test design perspective, it's an atomic call, you put something in and in the end you check if it was correct. So this approach to look at what can I do here, what are the test cases and actions, it gives you a complete list of possible actions that have to be tested. Now for each one of those you have to look at step two. And step two is find the parameters of these actions. So for instance for a UI case it means if you hit uh, some action that does you know, like the, the big do it button F8 or so in SAP transactions you would look at the screen configure and configuration and other things but you would look at the data that goes into the code. You find parameters and the possible values. In an API, it's also, again, a little easier because you see it right in front of you in the code. You have a method and you have certain parameters, and then with parameters associated, certain value possibilities. And, of course, there is also application configuration. But, again, this gives you a set of parameters that are relevant for this test case. So, first we found the test cases derived from the user actions. Now we found parameters for this particular and for each test case. And parameters are actually key for test design because we have to consider three co sources of parameters and two types. This is actually quite simple. If you look at the graphic below, in the, in the middle is software under test. This is the piece of software that you want to test. Now, the direct input, what you input to the software is what you say, for instance, see on the screen. And then, of course, there is also the configuration, like customizing master data and so forth which affects the behavior of the software. And then finally is of course the transactional data. So for instance, a materials catalog or any kind of objects that are the object of the software that it works on. And so each of these three different sources of input is relevant for the test. Now for all of those three, there are two types of parameters to consider. One is test model relevant. And those are parameters that affect the behavior of the code in some way. And this is, of course, the focus of the test. 
And then there is always also in some form some dummy data that you need for the test, but it's actually you wouldn't model. For instance, the customer address or an article name or some description text. The point is that there is no if in the code that depends on it, and so you wouldn't be trying to be smart about what to put there, except if you focus on this particular field. You just needed to run the test at all, that there is some data at all. So for the modeling purpose of to think about smart ways to covering parameter space, we only look at test model relevant parameters, which in this case, for instance, if we look at a certain action, we know that a certain number of parameters are relevant for it, and only those we are considering for modeling. Now, in the next remaining sections, we will uh, present something called integrated test design. Actually, it's a SAP version integrated test design. It doesn't exist as a standard term, but it's uh, we put this together as a way to combine four key methods in a systematic way to come to a systematic parameter coverage and a good test design.